and we're at the halfway mark of the simulation. You've completed three rounds. You're moving into round four, or what the simulation calls year dash four. So I'm going to reverse the order today. I'm going to go over my suggestions on how to progress, move forward, and then I'll review the round for the entire class. So the first thing to do is to go into the overview screen and re-evaluate your points. So here I was able to increase my revenues by 85%. So I had 85 points. Now my quick ratio went down due to the fact that I borrowed money this round. Uh, so I lost 21 points there, but I was able to increase my profit margins by five percentage points from 47 to 52 or a 10% increase. Uh, I was able to parlay that into a 14% increase in my operations by better managing my marketing costs and then a 13% net profit increase. Now these net profit increases help fuel the increases on my ROI, ROE, earnings per share and ROA. Now I did invest and purchase a lot of assets. So my total asset turnover was lower because my assets grew faster than my sales. And then my return on assets, um, the return on the assets were flat because my assets grew pretty quickly, quicker than the relationship of the growth of earnings. So it did improve only slightly. And that's, to, that's typical for year two, three, four, is as you're growing your assets, uh, by year five and six, your assets should be returning a decent profit as you don't need to acquire, acquire as many assets. My book value went up, I created value for the company, and I didn't really lose any points in my forecasting, but I, and I made a 100% increase of my operational investments, and I had a surplus, so I ordered a total of 600 points were earned this round, better than the average 400 I was shooting for. So my cumulative points are 1,500, I'm more than halfway there to the required amount for the course. Now, I would go into my assessment, and I would check out my assessments for ideas on how to improve, I'd move into my charts. Specifically, I would want to look at my uh, team performance chart. And I want to look at, see how my sales are doing down here. And I underestimated my trucks, my sedan, I'm sorry, my sedans, my economy, and trucks were all underestimated. I could have sold much more. The yellow is what I actually did sell. The blue is what I could have sold. So my sales, my company is better than I think it is. So I have to take that into account when I move forward, um, I would look at the industry, see what my top competitors have done, check out my financials, and finally move back into sales. Now, this month, I went from an operational reduction of 600 to 4,500 because of the money I spent in my operational investments. Now it's gonna be easier for me to maintain my profit margins because I have a much higher um, operational cost reduction due to all the investments I made last round on the production page. And this is key to keeping, maintaining profitability. And when it comes to my sales forecasts, of course, I always suggest to check with the student manual. And on the student manual for year three, I'm going to see, you know, the, what the average sales would be. So if I think my company is better than average, I should forecast higher. If I think it's lower than average, I should forecast lower. So this is just a guideline of what the average sales would be. But your company is most likely going to sell more or less than that amount. So let's go up to economy. I see that the customer's expectations have increased. The importance factors have stayed the same. The amount I can sell the car for has increased slightly. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to try and make a, um, a better car. So finally, getting into the customer expectation range there. So I'm going to start out trying to make a better car and increase the price. So I was able to increase the profit margin substantially. Uh, I'm going to put my new forecast in. And the reason I was able to increase, make a better car and increase my profit margin um, was because of the fact that I made those operational cost reductions. So I'm going to, I might tweak this a little bit. I think I'm going to take a chance and try and sell at the higher end of my, better than what the average is. Because I think my cars are now getting a little bit better than the average car. And that should translate into um, better sales. 
As long as I keep increasing my profit margins, I'm going to be happy with that. And again, these numbers I'm putting in, I'm just kind of putting these in quickly. So I don't, I don't suggest you copy me. I, you need to do your own analysis for where your car company is at. Um, okay, so here I wasn't able to <clears throat> really increase too much. <clears throat> So I'm going to play around a little bit because I want this number to go higher as best I can. Okay, so I got it somewhat higher. Still not crazy about it, but I'm going to have to make <clears throat> buy more operational investments if I'm going to keep my luxury brand more profitable. Now marketing, <clears throat> I did off camera because it does take a long time to do the marketing. <clears throat> now... And I've noticed that the marketing budgets have gone up substantially but as the, comp as the companies become more competitive. So I'm going to definitely be spending a lot more on marketing this year. Um, now I buy it. <clears throat> I see here I need another production plant. So I don't want to buy more than I need. So I always keep a tight control. Why would I buy two production plants when I only need to make 3,800 cars? I don't need to buy two. So I'm only going to buy one additional because who would want a production plant open and sitting there doing nothing all year just wasting money? And I'm going to increase my operational. Um, I'm going to move these up and try to spend some money. I might not have enough money <clears throat> to afford all these changes, but I'm going to see if I can. By the end, when I get the finance page, I'll see if I can afford it. So I'm going to try and move these up. I'll be a little aggressive at first. I might have to pull these back if I don't have enough money to fund this investment. So here, no production plan is needed. Um, which gives me some more money. And then here. I may not have enough money to fund this, but we'll see where we are at the, when I get to the finance page. Okay, so on the finance page, I still have a nice uh, net profit surplus. So now I can actually start retiring funds. So I'm gonna retire some of my debt and buy back some stock. Okay, and that gives me still a pretty comfortable, oh, no, my cash surplus now is negative 28. So actually, I misstepped that. I do have a deficit here. Okay, so I don't want to run a deficit and I don't want to do a lot more borrowing. So I'm going to go back to production and I'll pull back on some of the operational cost reductions. So I'm still making a significant amount of operational cost reductions. And let's see. On the finance page, but I can't do as many as I had hoped. Okay, it gives me a twelve million dollars surplus, which I'm I'm comfortable with. Um, I'm not going to be able to, to retire any funds just yet, but if I can sell all the cars that I forecasted to sell, this this surplus should come should develop. Now, if I wind up, I'm taking a risk because if I do have a lot of unsold vehicles, if I over forecast it, I may have a surprise deficit, which I'm hoping I don't. So this is just uh, a risk I'm gonna take. But so let me complete the round. So round four is now complete. So as, um, let's go into the charts for the industry and we'll see how people did in round three. So round three, we can see that net profits have increased a great deal because the company, the student manual shows that they have this growth percentages. So the industry is growing, economy cars are growing 25, sedans 30, truck 20, and luxury 35%. So luxury is growing the fastest. So they're, um, and actually, when I look at those forecast rates, we're doing year four. I accidentally looked at year um, three. So I think I need to up my forecast even more 
due to the fact that we're in year four. So that was my mistake. So I'm going to have to go back. Good thing I noticed that. That's why I'm not, I'm not perfect. I make mistakes too. So I'm going to have to go back to sales and I'm going to have to say this is closer to 4,500. This is going to be closer to 6,000. I'm going to forecast. I'm going to move this up to three and then four. Okay. Now this is going to increase my sales. I'm going to have to look here and I'm going to have to increase my, uh, okay, I'm going to buy two plants here. You set the 6,000. Uh, this is still good. I'm going to have to buy another plant here and increase this to 3843. Okay, so now my production is balanced. Let's see what that did to. To here. I like these warnings. It helps me figure out if I made a mistake in the inputs. Okay, so now I'm going to go into the finance to see how that affected my finance page. So now I still didn't, uh, because I had to buy those new production plants, it pretty much ate up the additional profits from those new cars. So I'm still around 12 million. So I'm going to complete that. Okay, so let's go back. So good thing I noticed that um, little mistake I made about the sales forecasting. So Hopefully you watch the video to this point so you can go back if, if you're looking at that and update that too. Now, as far as the entire company, we have uh, a, uh, $108 million in their profits and 107, 106 and 107. So anybody over 100 million net profits is doing very well. Some of the teams down here, you have a lot of room to move your profits up. Uh, so you need to focus on your profit margins and that will help with your points as well. If we look at points per team, we see uh, this company performed the strongest in round two. And then in round three, they also did, you know, I've never seen a team perform as well as this team has. Uh, they already have, uh, you know, probably close to uh, 2000 cumulative points, just fantastic performance. Um, this is a team that I had worked on. So this is the Blank empty team that I showed my decisions last round moved me from uh, 200 points to 600 points. Uh, this team had a good comeback from the previous round points. So some teams actually made some very decent comebacks from the previous rounds based on you know some inputs. And some teams you know have felt fallen behind a little bit. They need to focus, I would say, primarily on their profit margins to get those points up. Okay, stock price. We have the same leader. Skippy is still number one in stock price, followed by AutoX and Starship Motors, JL Corp. Um, so we have, on the high end, we have $55 a share. and the low end, we're still at about $18 a share. So everybody was able to increase their, their stock price, but some increased faster than others. If we look at sales, we see that uh, this team is flat. So we have a few teams flat in sales. Uh, a couple teams really greatly increasing their sales. We have a new number one leader, Horizon Motors at 509 million in sales. Uh, earnings per share, we had a company here that adaptive order, watch your profit margins, your earnings per share should not decrease that quickly. And we had a few companies like CCC Auto greatly increase. We have a new number one Skippy in earnings per share. So they were able to um, convert more of their sales into profits this round and take number one place. Two and three. Uh, four and five. So I was able to make Cortina earnings per share move up. One of the ways I did that is um, focusing on profit margins, but you could also buy back stock would help. So a lot of companies doing well in their earnings per share. And this is just the total market, your market share compared to. Um, so if I was to look at my market share this round, this is the total market units sold was 12,000 units. And you can see how from 12,000, some people are above 13,000, 14,000, some people are down to 8,000. So you want to look at your competitors and say, if I'm at 8,000, something I'm doing wrong, if people are almost doubling that. Uh, and the same thing when it comes to uh, total market and sales dollars. So what are your sales dollars compared to other companies? There's a big diversity here. So you want to get an idea what the marketplace, potential in the marketplace and try to move your company into that potential. Okay, so that's my review of my hints and review my hints for round four and my review of performance around three um the next round's coming up 
on Saturday, round four. So make sure you're here for that and you and you complete that round and you get those total points, those total cumulative points you need to get an A in this project. Okay, and remember, if you need, the best way of, of, of doing well is running practice rounds. So take your ideas and your concepts and test them out in the practice rounds. And that could de definitely help a great deal as well. Okay, thanks and have a great day.